My dear sisters, it seems there was a passion play and one who acted as Judas after seeing what was done to Jesus was shouting aloud, My God, I have made a mistake. To whom shall I go? To whom shall I go? Who will speak for me? Who will intercede for me? How can I be freed from the great crime I have committed? It seems one of the children among the audience said to the mother, Mommy, Judas can go to Mother Mary, no? She will surely accept him. It was really very, very beautiful from that little child. If Judas trusted in the mercy of God, had gone to the merciful mother, surely the mother would have interceded for him. We would have had not only Saint Peter, we would have also had Saint Judas. Such is the power of the merciful mother. We heard in the introduction how through the intercession of the merciful mother, the Christians were freed from the clutches of Muslims when they were persecuted. We shall also approach the same loving mother. Especially in this year of mercy, let us imitate that mother in being merciful to one another and also in approaching her for mercy to be shown to us. The compassionate mother was at the foot of the cross, sharing in the passion of her son. The compassionate mother was united with the apostles in praying. We read in Acts of the Apostles, first chapter, 14th verse. Otherwise, the early church would have been broken to pieces. The mother, through her compassion, united everyone. Coming to today's liturgy of the word, it's really wonderful that we heard in the last week a few passages from the book of Ecclesiastes, especially those who are young, today's passage is addressed. Rejoice, O young man, young woman, in your youth and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. The Lord wants young people to be happy. They are all called to rejoice, to enjoy the beauty of God's creation. Make use of God's gifts. But then the next sentence. Walk in the ways of your heart and the sight of your eyes. But know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. Everything we do is taken notice by God. And you be happy, enjoy life. But do not forget the Lord your God. That is a very beautiful lesson for us. Remove vexation from your mind and put away pain from your body. For youth and the dawn of life are vanity. And then once again, another important sentence. Remember also your creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come. And years draw nigh, when you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Do not forget the Lord your God when you are young. It is nothing extraordinary when some old people, when they are beyond everything, turn to God. But then when young people turn to God, it is really marvelous. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth. And then what will happen in the old age? is reported here. Actually, we do not have the last passage of uh, this book of Ecclesiastes. As you know, Ecclesiastes is said to have been written by Solomon, somebody who had so many wives, so many concubines, so much of riches, so much of wisdom and so on. And finally, he says, everything is vanity. Everything is futile. Everything is like chasing the wind. The man says, 
from his experiential wisdom learn to fear the lord learn to walk in the way of the lord that's what is important and god is the judge he will take into account everything you do that is the conclusion of the book from next week onwards we will begin the book of job this week we heard mostly from the book of ecclesiastes amidst the vanity we are asked to seek the lord constantly especially when we are young consider every day as god given day make use of god's gift and above all walk in the ways of the lord in spite of all the vanities that is described throughout the 12th chapters the book ends saying walk in the ways of the lord god is the judge he will call you to judgment may we learn to walk in the way of the lord as mary our mother of mercy walked in the way of the lord amen